Hello everyone, it's Farkad here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to get the Knight V. It's a new motorized unicycle thing that allows you to travel fast. You can't carry it in your inventory, so it works similar to how the glider works. It makes you move about twice as fast, maybe a little bit more than running, and it runs on batteries. And it is quite fun to use. I think now we know why there's roads in the game, because it runs much better on the roads than it does in the forest. Now this was added with the latest update, the Major Update 3, and it can be found pretty easily above ground. It's near the waterfall, the big one. I'll show it on the map here, and you can just come up and collect it. It's actually near where I built my major base in the first playthrough I've done, which I still technically am on. It's sitting up against the tent, right next to the winter jacket and a crafted spear. Now, if you're looking for the easiest way to get it, the best way is in the main menu, type in cheat stick. That turns on console commands. Get into the game, press F1, and you can either type one of these two. To teleport to the IV, Type in go to space minus 1030 space 228 space minus 624 and that will teleport you straight to it. The other way is just to spawn it in, which is spawn item space night V. If you want to do it the legit way, from the start, from the forest spawn, you just head directly north. And I did a test to see how long that would take and it took a minute and 40 seconds. Now how this thing drives, it's pretty good. It relies on keyboard controls rather than mouse ones. So I think that allows the player to look around. You can't switch like on seven days to die. On that game, you can switch view mode while driving. So you can steer with the mouse or you can steer with the keyboard. I do not know if enemies can use it. We'll have to wait and see. I don't think they can. And also don't know how they react to it. But you can easily outrun a lot of enemies with it. Because it is an item you carry, you cannot carry it into caves. But that makes sense. The only cave I think it would be suitable for is the end game cave. What I've learned from riding it in the brief time that I've had. The major issues I found are the rocks that are in the ground. They'll knock you off and you'll go flying off it. And you don't take any damage, but it's kind of annoying. So it's probably best to stick to the roads if you can. Since it's only about twice as fast as running, a lot of the time this isn't going to be that viable unless it's over long distance. Probably similar to the glider, because if you're running, you can go on a straight line. Though there's one major perk for this is that it can basically go up vertical elevation. So it can climb cliffs and stuff like that. I don't think at 90 degrees it would work, but if it's a good 70, it's probably going to work. I don't know how the batteries work since they've added some new stuff with this update and I haven't had time to look into it. As it is Easter, I've got family commitments. That's why I'm just covering this section here in depth. And then I'll include the rest in a separate video, an update video, because I want to be as detailed as possible. Possible. This is probably the highlight of this update, but there's a lot of cool things added in this update. This is probably the update that I have liked the most purely because it feels like it's bringing back the silliness of the forest. The things that were just quirky or just silly that were fun, they didn't really have to make sense, but it suited the game well. Plus the addition of this might open up more vehicles later on, such as golf carts. I had a feeling this was going to happen with the amount of roads that were in the game and the roads are marked on the map. That wasn't a thing in the forest. Another cool thing about this Night V thing is that there was no indication that they were going to add it. It wasn't in the game files. There's a lot of things in there, but this wasn't in there, so we had no idea this was coming. I don't believe we did. So it's good to see that they're keeping some things under their belt and there are things that are going to be a big surprise. Because it kind of felt they were just adding stuff that we already knew was going to come. This does address the issue of the map being too big because the map is quite large. Getting across it takes forever on foot. It is actually quite a grind. I do have one suggestion for end night of what might be a good addition and that is to have a back slot and that's just one slot you have on your back that you can carry one major item. So this could include the glider or the night V and that way the player can carry around one of them at all times. Obviously if you're in caves those things can't be equipped. So like a major slot item that can be accessible by a hotkey. I think this might be a good addition for the game because having to pick it up and carry it around is a bit annoying at times I think. It was in the forest that's why I never used the glider in there. I haven't really had a chance to use it in here because I've been mainly focusing on tutorials and stuff like that. I haven't been actually playing the game too much the way it's meant to be played. Now, there's a few things that you should know about this thing is that it cannot go down on zip lines. If you're carrying it and you activate a zip line, you'll just drop it. The next thing is you can't attach a GPS locator to it. It does have an indicator on the map, but after you get a certain distance away, it disappears. And if you move closer to it, it doesn't come back. 
Next is that if you take it in the water, you will drop it. And it doesn't appear that you can pick it up if you're still underwater, so you can't drag it. It does float downstream if it's in the water though. So if you fall into water that's quite deep, far away, you might not be able to get it back. Now it does respawn when you save and reload, so you can get multiple ones of them. I don't know how this would work in multiplayer, how it will translate. And you can spawn in about 20 of them, but since you can only really have about eight players, it's not really useful information. Now with the addition of the new spring trap, I thought I'd test it out how it would go on there. And yeah, it launches you pretty far, but you'll fall off it because you're just falling too far. Though my guess is that you could use this to get up on higher places if you're building down low. But yeah, otherwise it will knock you off. Anyway, hopefully you found this information useful. And I think Ed and I did a good job with this one. I should have the update video shortly. I've got a working computer now for the most part. But I've got Easter stuff to do with family. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers.